Today's video is sponsored by ASICPrices.com. ASICPrices.com is one of my new favorite sites to scope out true profitability and ROI rankings before I make my next ASIC purchase. Check this out. I can simply enter my current electric rate and instantly see what ASICs are best suited for me. On top of that, let's say I want to find what ASIC miner is most profitable to stack Doge and Litecoin. Just select your algo and bam, there is the Bitmain L7. ASICPrices.com has taken things to the next level. Look at this. When you select a miner, look at all this amazing information. Miner statistics and overviews, historic miner prices, daily and 30 day mining revenue, trusted vendors, and much, much more. Go check out ASICPrices.com today. What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, we are so close to getting our fog hashing home immersion kit up and running. Let's go ahead and head outside and I'll show you guys all the progress we've made. All right, all of our equipment from the shed is still hanging out inside here. Went ahead and actually, yes, we got another purchases from Hawk Crypto Mining. Huge shout out to him. Uh, we'll go over that in a future video, but it's packed full of 67 hundred XTs. I know I wasn't going to buy any more hardware until I went ahead and kind of audited and went over everything and decided what I was going to sell, but it was too good of a deal. So thanks Hawk for giving it to me. I did move one of our jazz miners over here, uh, right over here, uh, just to give us a little heat, which has actually worked out great. It's plugged in, wired in ethernet. This is the X4Q uh, and let's see here. 73 in here, so nice and comfortable right now in Pennsylvania. But let's head outside and take a look. All right, so what progress have we made on our immersion kit? So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll start at the dry cooler here. All right, so check it out. We built ourselves this pad here for our dry cooler um, and uh, it, you know worked out really well there used to be a bush here there used to be a third bush right here went ahead and gutted it my son helped me and that worked out awesome so we gutted the bush and then we went ahead and built this leveled out pad um, we put some weed paper on the bottom um, and then we filled it with leveling sand we put our bricks in there filled it in with some more sand and then my HVAC guy who had come over and helped me just from the idea of like con uh, concept and like where he would put things, he recommended these concrete bricks here in order to get it off the ground, especially here in Pennsylvania with the winter. It doesn't need to be crazy off the ground, but just enough. So went ahead and put those in. And then I did go ahead and put some tap cons in. Uh, cut my finger working, uh, tap cons in, uh, and that worked out really well. This thing alone weighs about 100 pounds, so with the bricks, it stays down really well. I thought about doing another hole in these and putting some rebar all the way down in, but as you can see, it doesn't go far. All right, so let's go through everything here. So we have our power cable here coming off of this. This uses about 440 watts. Uh, the power cable, you know, is completely connected into it. You can't disconnect it there. It's just a simple C13 on the other end. So I went ahead and secured it down and went right inside the house here. So let's go on the other side of this wall and I'll show you guys where we have that running to. All right, so we're in our garage on the opposite side of that wall there. And the cable actually comes through the wall, sorry, back behind here. And then you can actually see it comes up right here, right? And then we actually have it coil. And then it goes into this trip light PDU here. Sorry, it's a little dark back in here. And I actually have that just wiring right into this meter box. A uh, huge shout out once again. This is my first meter box I got from Matt Electron. Huge shout out to him. Uh, that's in place there and it's off right now and but wired into our panel up top there. So coiled up and just plugged right in on its own. It'll use 440 watts. I had this in place and the placement worked out perfectly. All right, so back outside here. So now let's talk about our pipes. So this is our cold pipe and this is our hot pipe here. So the hot oil is gonna come in from the system and flow into this. This is just a glorified radiator, to be honest with you. I'll show you the backside here. Look at that. Don't mess up any of the fins. So 
hot oil comes in, runs through the entire system, gets cooled, and comes out the cold side. So I was chatting with Fog Hashing, figuring out exactly the way to lay this out because it comes with 15 foot hoses. And I wasn't gonna mess with cutting them and all that types of stuff, because to be honest with you, that's not really my thing, not really my craft. So I decided to go ahead and coil them up here, just a nice little loop. And I actually just put in those brackets there and it's not overly tight, you know, it works out well. Uh, just to keep them down and in place. I also have kids too. I've actually might even put a little like wall here, or fence here, just cause I'm afraid they're gonna cut themselves on the back of that. But I didn't want anything to move. So I looped it really nicely, no hard turns or 90 degrees, came through here. Now, the way with the hoses, I actually put it right over top. I have the downspouts actually go into the ground. I didn't want the hoses to fall down here with like cutting the grass and things like that. So I decided to put them up over top of this lift. So that's why you see kind of the zip tie holding it here and then over here and then over to here. So not the perfect best way to do it, I guess. Um, I thought about bringing it up like this height and coming over, but then it created this weird bend and I wanted all the bends to be very fluid based off my conversation with the fog hashing team. So flows around, comes through, over and up. And now we have two different heights here, two different holes, lots of caulk went to town, not a professional, as I've told you guys many times. But we have our cold one coming in down below and our hot one up top. So let's go in the shed and I'll show you guys the tank. All right, let's hop inside. Oh, failed. There we go. Okay, now this is pretty empty right now. You guys can actually see, look, we got our other PDUs coiled up here. A lot of planning we still have to do in the shed. Um, I'll show you guys over here. Look at this mismatch. So I have a bunch of cables just thrown everywhere because I'm hosting this rig for my cousin. This is my cousin's and this is my cousin's. So I wanna make sure they're up and running while I'm doing all this kind of reevaluation of everything in the shed and reorganizing it. Then I also have my QNAP and also my core wallets on this uh, Hyper-V host here. So I need that stuff up and running. So this is all just short term thrown in place. I did end up moving in my shed, my switches over here. Got some ears for those. And I'm gonna run custom ethernet cables over. Take a look. The bottom shelf, if you guys remember, my shed was fully set up for GPUs. Same thing, about 29 and a half inches. This now, I used to have a shelf right here and I'd have all of my network switches and all these PDUs sitting in the middle. I got rid of that. Now I have a full another shelf available for all my GPU server cases. So my plan is to double my GPU count up top and right there. And then just like I did in my new shed, run all my power and ethernet cables along this bracket here with Velcro and into everything. So gonna be a lot of really good changes coming up. Okay, so let's take a look on the other side here away from that server case. All right, so take a look, ignore all the cables. This is actually the pump they send you. Let me go ahead and move this here. Can't wait to use that. All right, so here's our tank sitting on the exhaust side here. And the nice thing is, is that this uses 220 watts, so and I will run that right up and plug that in right here into the bottom of this PDU. Here's our tank here. So let me jump, let me, ah, actually here, I'll open these up. Okay, so first, this is our spillover tank and the hot oil will come out and look at that. I made it perfectly level right over to there. So when the hot oil comes out, it goes right over and out the backside. And you can see there's the spillover down below there. Then, here is where our ASICs will sit. I'm trying to keep this as clean as possible, so keeping this closed. Our ASICs are gonna sit right down inside of here, two of those. I'll show you guys those in just a minute. So let me flip over here. I know I've been back and forth. All right, here we go. Take a look. So here's our hot oil coming out of the spillover tank and going out that side. And then here's our cold side. You see how, look at that, just flows nice and flat. That was my entire goal and goes right into there. Now, this one's gonna interfere with like me putting like a server case here. So I'm gonna have to put like maybe some small, some small items right here. I don't want all the heat to blast into the one side here, but I wanted to make do with the space I had. I looked at moving my rack a little bit, but the downside is this side's already pretty tight. I didn't wanna go too much farther this way. So yes, this interferes with like putting rigs here, 
But the nice thing is it gives her a nice smooth flow for the oil, which I'm really excited about. So what's next? Well, let's talk ASICs. Right, so I've been doing some testing. This is an old, my old mining room that is no longer set up really for mining, but I did leave a PDU and a meter uh, in here so I could do a lot of my testing. Um, this is where I have like my network switch for the rest of my house, for the basement, all my patch panels there. There are some old meters here, but they're totally disconnected actually at the panel. There's another one over there. I just use, this whole thing is just storage. So anyways, um, what I've been doing, so I have two A6 prepped for immersion. They're, ju they're just about ready to go. This one and this one here. So this one here is done. It is set. This is the S19J Pro, 100 terahash unit. Now, I wanted to run Hive firmware on this based off of chatting with a few different people in the community. Huge shout out to Ben, by the way, for Immersion BTC. He's been a good sounding board for kind of getting everything prepped for immersion. This thing has been stripped down, cleaned entirely, fans removed, power supply fans removed. We got our handles put on. And inside here, we also have our dummy plugs installed. Now, this board is an AM logic board. So the downside is, is when I want to install Hive, take a look, there's no SD card slot there. It just has that little like micro USB, whatever. So in order to put Hive on this, you actually have to reach out to Hive OS and they actually remote in uh, via command line and push the uh, firmware directly to the unit. It's actually a really cool setup with them. Huge shout out to Hive. They remoted in yesterday. I sent an appointment with them at 3 p.m. and they did this one in all about 10 minutes. Now, in order to test it and get this thing up and running, what I've been doing is I install it here, has the dummy plugs in and everything so there's no fans. I power it up and I use the AC Infinity inline fan just to blow air through it. And then I actually put them in sleep mode. So if you put them in sleep mode, they're not actually mining, so they're not creating a bunch of heat but just to be safe, I have the AC Infinity fan blowing through it. Now, this other one is my problem child, of course. This is the S19XP AM Logic board as well. So this was the one that they ended up having to replace. My first one lasted 15 minutes. This one, I decided to use this one for immersion because it was running hot in my mining shed. My 11 other ASICs had no problems. This one kept overheating almost, stupid. Talked to Bitmain, they said these do run a lot hotter than their other units. I think, honestly, I think the XP models were just the biggest fail for them, uh, I'll be honest with you. But anyways, I'm like, okay, let's put it in immersion then if it runs hot. They went ahead, Hive went ahead and logged in, did this one in 15 minutes, spent like two hours on this one and ran into some segmented errors. If you guys know what those are, please let me know, but their engineers have to look at it to figure it out more. So that's my delay. I want to get both of these done and the firmware done before I go putting them in oil because I really don't want to take them out. Once you put them in oil, you never go back. So in my upcoming video, next video coming up, I'm hoping uh, next week, I'm going to have both of these, do it with you guys, put these in the tank. You do that first, put them in the tank, get them all hooked up, ethernet and power, and then we're going to use that pump that you guys saw in my mining shed and get the oil all pumped in. We have to put 70 liters of oil into that system. I can't wait. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap things up for today. I'm super excited to get into this fog hashing system and get my miners going. It's like a whole nother area of mining with ASICs. It's just immersion, which isn't really talked about as much. And I really fell in love with it after visiting the immersion BTC farm that in Arkansas, that was so cool. So this is a great step for me as a home miner. If you guys are interested in the system, it's the C2 system, I'll put a link directly down below to it. I wanna be fully transparent, Fog Hashing did send over this system for a review. So, sponsored by Fog Hashing, truly appreciate their support of the channel. Next video coming out next week, we will be installing these ASICs, getting the oil in there, and getting these things mining. Cannot wait. Oh.